Okay, this is AP, AB, and BC Calculus. We're doing Unit 1, Section 14, which is connecting infinite limits and vertical asymptotes. We've actually talked a lot about vertical asymptotes already in previous videos, and several times I've said, wait till we get to Section 14. So here we are. All right. Um, let's talk about what can happen when we have vertical asymptotes. So there's basically three things that can happen with vertical asymptotes. Uh, there are also... Uh, a couple separate options if a graph only exists on one side of an asymptote, uh, like, for instance, a logarithmic function, but we'll deal with that in, in a couple minutes. Let's assume that most of the time when we're, seeing, uh, when we're seeing asymptotes, we're seeing them from probably rational functions. So one thing that can happen is that let's say we have an asymptote here at 1, and again, pardon my inability to draw, both ends can go up, right? So again, this is not meant to be accurate at all, but both ends can go up. Uh, let's say I have an asymptote here at negative 2, both ends could go down right, like this. Uh, let's say I have an asymptote at zero, right, I could have a mismatch where one end goes up and the other end goes down. Or let's put an asymptote over here, I could have a mismatch where the, uh, the left end goes down and the right end goes up, but the same idea, they're two different options. So essentially, if we, if we spot that something has a vertical asymptote, we can use a really simple table, like not a calculator table with horrible disgusting decimals, but a really straightforward table with nice easy numbers to just determine which of these situations we have, right? Um, the big hint that it's a vertical asymptote is if, when, if you plug in uh, and get a number on top of zero, not zero over zero, right? Zero over zero is, is code to simplify, right? Um, but if you plug in and get a number on top of zero, right, like five on top of zero or four on top of zero, or negative 57 on top of zero, that's going to be a vertical asymptote in general, right? If you get zero over zero, you're going to simplify. But if you get number over zero, it's probably a vertical asymptote. So let's go ahead and walk through some options. Okay, so I'm going to evaluate. Uh, so I have this f of x equals five over x minus two, and I'm going to evaluate the left, right, double sided and an actual function value, right? So some of you probably already know what this graph looks like, right? Some of you without doing a whole lot of math know what this graph looks like, and that's great if that's you. I'm gonna make the argument that the easiest way to do this is I can see right away that when I plug in zero, right? If I plug in, I get five on top of zero, which is a big heads up that I'm looking at a vertical asymptote. So I'm gonna go ahead and recognize that at two, I very much have a vertical asymptote. What that means is I just need a couple points to the left and right of two to see which way the data is trending. Because if you go back, as you approach a vertical asymptote, you're either both going to positive infinity, you're both going down to negative infinity, or you're mismatching and one of you is going up and one of you is going down. But either way, none of these are going to finite numbers, right? They're all going to infinite numbers. So I'm just going to make this little table with a couple values on either side. So when I say immediately around two, I mean nice easy numbers like one and zero on this side, right? So that's approaching two from the left, but I'm not using like 1.999 and 1.999. You could, but the idea is that you'd want to be able to answer this without a calculator, and I don't want to plug in 1.999 in my head without a calculator, no thank you. Um, on this side, I could plug in, uh, not two, come on brain. You know, I see the one and then I put a two, but clearly this is two, so three and four. Okay, so... When we plug in, I'm going to plug in right here to this, right? So I'm going to get 5 over negative 2, which is a negative 2.5 if you're better with decimals. When I plug the 1 in, I'm going to get a 5 over a negative 1, which is a negative 5. Here's the point I want to make. I'm just comparing these two numbers. Negative 2.5 is a higher number than negative 5, which means as I go this way, my numbers are getting lower. I must be going to a negative infinity. When I plug in 3 and 4, again, the only options, I'm going to one of the infinities. Those are my choices. So if the numbers are physically getting lower as I approach that 2, it must be going down to negative infinity. Again, you don't want to pick numbers really far away because sometimes there are graphs that have multiple asymptotes and that could mess up your world. Just pick the closest integer values right next to the number you want. And you could totally make a table with like 1.9999 and 1.99, but why? Right? If you don't have to, if all you need to know is which way data is trending, it makes your life a lot easier. Um, so when I plug in 3, right, this would be a 5 over a 1, which is a 5, right, and this would be a 5 over a 2, which is a 2.5. These values, as I approach from this direction, are just definitely getting larger, right, because 2.5 is smaller than 5, so this side's going to infinity. So on the left, I'm going to a negative infinity. On the right, I'm going to a positive infinity, which means the double-sided limit does not exist because they're different, and the function is undefined at a vertical asymptote, which I could have jumped to in the first place. All right, let's go ahead and try uh, P1. Same idea, you can totally feel free to ignore me if you, uh, like, pause me and do this on your own if you want, or have me keep going, I don't care. 
All right, so again, if I plug negative four in, it becomes very clear very quickly, right? So when I plug in, if I plug in, I get negative three over zero, which tells me, oh, hey, I have a vertical asymptote. So I say, cool, I get it, negative four is a vertical asymptote, great. Let's see what's happening on either side of negative four. So I'm gonna pick negative five and negative six. Over here, I'm gonna pick negative three and negative two. When I plug in, I get a negative three over a negative two, which is a 1.5. When I plug in the negative five, I get a negative three over negative one, which is a three. These values are clearly getting larger as I approach, so it must be going to infinity. So my left-sided limit is infinity. When I plug in the negative three, I get negative three over a positive one, which is a negative three. When I plug in the negative two, I get negative three over a positive two, which is a negative 1.5. These values are getting lower as I approach because negative three is lower than negative 1.5. So this is going down to negative infinity. So that's my right-sided limit, which means my double-sided limit does not exist. And the function is undefined at a vertical asymptote. So those are my four answers. All right, moving on. Okay, so now we're asked to evaluate a double-sided limit, right? It's the same thing we've basically been asked to do, except instead of asking you for the left and right, I didn't mention the left and right. You just have to know that they're required. So this is a more realistic AP question because this level question, right? This level question is making you do each individual step that's going to be required to get to the final answer, right? So here was my double-sided limit, but I had to do these two to figure that out. Not every question is going to ask you for each individual step. You're just going to have to understand that those are the steps required to get there. So let's look at the left and right limits, right? So I know that Negative one is definitely a vertical asymptote because when I plug in, I get negative two over a zero squared, which tells me, oh, hey, I have a vertical asymptote. So negative one, definitely a vertical asymptote. The question is what's happening on either side of negative one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some values and see what's happening, right? So on this side, when I plug in a negative three, I get negative two on top of a negative two quantity squared, which would be a positive four. So I get negative one half, right? When I plug in negative two, I get negative two on top of, when I plug in negative two plus one, I get a negative one squared, which would be a one. So I get a negative two, right? So this thing is getting more negative. When I go the other direction and plug in zero, I get a negative two over a one squared, which is a one. So I get a negative two. That's a negative, it just didn't show up. Uh, and when I plug in the one, I get a negative two over a two squared, which is a four, so that's a negative one half. So this one's also going all the way down. So the left-sided limit's negative infinity, the right-sided limit's negative infinity, so my answer is that this is negative infinity because they're the same. Go ahead and try P2. Again, you're not actually asked for the left and right-handed limits. Oh, as a side note, another option, if you had a calculator, is you could graph this in your calculator and use your eyeballs, right? You can, uh, if you want to sound fancy, when you use your eyeballs to figure something out, you can say by visual inspection and, you know, say it in an accent or something. It makes you sound super smart. Um, but really, you're just using your eyeballs, right? So I can see when I plug in, if I plug in, I get a five over zero squared, which is definitely a vertical asymptote. So at x equals three, I very much have a vertical asymptote. I just need to pick two easy values on either side of three, right? So this is approaching three from the left. This is approaching three from the right. When I plug in one, I get a five over four. When I plug in two, I get a five. These values are getting higher, right? Because 1.25 is smaller than five. When I plug in four, I get a five over one, which is a five. When I plug in five, I get a five over four. So again, these values are getting bigger because 1.25 is smaller than five. So both of these are approaching infinities. Since the left and right are both approaching infinity, I have something that is going to infinity. And again, if you want to see, you can see this in a graph. Uh, if we do five divided by x minus three quantity squared, and there's nothing wrong with that. You're just not always going to have a calculator. And sure enough, you can see that both ends are going up, which is basically a much better version of the really bad drawing I did right here. All right. So uh, let's talk now about those graphs that only exist on one side of a vertical asymptote. Um, so some graphs only exist on one side because of a domain restriction. Here's a really common example. This is f of x equals the natural log of x. Remember, one of our big four domain restrictions was that the inside of a log has to be positive. So the domain of this thing is x is greater than zero. And you can see that from the graph, right? This little blue graph only exists on this side. So when this happens, uh, the right side limit, so if you use your eyeballs, you can see that the right sided limit uh, is a negative infinity. The double-sided limit is also an infinity. And the reason for that is because there is only one side. 
So if, if there's only one side, if only one side exists, then the double-sided limit is just that side. Um, and notice that the domain does not include zero. So undefined would be my f of zero. The reason I can't ask for the other si single-sided limit is there is no left. Right? Remember that uh, that's not the word no, that's the word not. There is no left, right? Um, so in this particular picture, remember the way we treated this was like a guy walking on the curve, right? So he's on the curve, he's to the right, and he's walking this way, right? Well, he can't stand on the curve on this side, right? There's no dude standing on the curve because there is no curve, right? Um, and so, so notice that you won't, ask, you won't be asked for the left-sided limit here because there is no left, okay? Um, let's go ahead and do a sample one that's similar. Go ahead and do a P3. It's the same idea. Notice that you can actually find the domain of this by saying that the inside has to be positive, right? So 2 minus x is greater than 0. So you're going to get negative x is greater than negative 2. And when you divide by a negative, you flip the sign. So sure enough, your domain is that x is less than 2. And that jives with what you can see here, right? Um, so as I approach 2 from the left, well, that's the guy walking on the curve, right? Here's my guy walking on the curve. Woo! He's walking down to negative infinity. The double side limit is also negative infinity because again, there is only left, right? So, so it's the same, so, so it's the same because there's only one side. There is no other side. Uh, the curve is undefined at two because as you can see, the domain does not include two. And again, the reason you can't ask for the other side is there is no right, right? If I tried to put a guy over here and I was like, hey, I'm walking on the curve. He's not, he's like flying, right? Uh, there's no curve. So there's no dude walking, right? So I can't ask you for that one. That's not how you spell any of those words, right? So there's no curves, so there's no dude walking. I can only ask you for the one side. Uh, and that is unit one, section 14.